tell you. This is getting so bad. Let's begin page 150 in your hymnals, This World Is Not My Home. Page 150. Let's all stand, shall we? Page 150. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the second they're all expecting me and that's one thing i know my savior pardoned me and now i onward go i know he'll take me through though i am weak and poor and i can't feel at home in this world anymore oh lord you know i had no friend like you if heaven's not my home 
morning. As most of you know, pastor's in Milwaukee going to a uh, funeral, and uh, he'll be preaching up there, so he's going to be busy. But he will enjoy it, seeing friends, hadn't seen a lot of years. So, uh, But pray for him. as has a great time up there, and then for safety as he travels home. Let's begin in prayer. Lord, we're grateful for this opportunity to be in your house once again. Lord, as we look into your word this morning, may it be the blessing that you intend it to be. We may profit from having made the effort to be here. Watch over us, meet our needs, and help us be faithful. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, time to recognize the birthdays and anniversaries for this week. Birthdays, Rod Lowry, Ben Ritter, Justin Fish all have birthdays this week. Anyone else have a birthday? Okay, when you see them, wish them a happy birthday. Anniversaries, Stephen and Christy Ruley have an anniversary this week. Anyone else have an anniversary? Okay, next song, page 144. Page 144. What a day that will be. There is coming a day. Is 469. 469. Christ for me. Christ for me. Yes, it's Christ for me. He's my Savior, my Lord and King. I'm so happy I shout and sing. Christ for me. It's Christ for me. Every day as I go my way, it is Christ for me. All right, John. I was hoping for more people. When pastor's away, I know, I know. But I, the lesson this morning is, I think, good. More people need to hear it. Can you hear me out there? My wife says, I can't hear you. She never can. I'm going to talk this morning about uh, 
being blessed or God's blessings. And I want you to think for a moment, what does that mean? How does God bless us? I want some participation. And remember, I can't hear, so you're going to have to speak up, or people in front are going to have to relay it to me. What's it mean to be blessed by God? Think about it. What? Favor, yeah, for sure. Grace. What was that? Grace. Grace. That's what's one of his favors or one, one of his blessings. Yes. If you okay, Ron. Salvation. That's a big blessing, isn't it? Joe. Protection for our way as we go. Okay, he does that. He meets our needs, doesn't he? Kevin? Okay. Well, if you look it up in the dictionary, grace, will, or I mean blessing will say something to the effect that happy, prosperous, to make holy, or to make happy. There's a lot more to it than that. And uh, let me, let's, let's list some examples of being blessed. I'll share a few to get you started, like long life. If, and we're going to look at a verse about that. He promises that if we do, if we obey, so on, walk with him, he promises long life. What else? Some specific things based upon what we've already talked about. What can you think of ways that he actually blesses us? Yes. Honor our parents. Honor our parents. Well, I don't know if that's a blessing, but that's a command, yes. What I'm looking for is something like health, happiness, a saved family. It's a major blessing. As Steve said, something meets our needs. We're successful in what we do. We're we prosper, our business, our lives prosper, uh, things like that. Now, who wouldn't want all these blessings? You'd be a fool not to want and desire these, this type of blessing from God. So why is it that so many Christians give up these blessings for the things of the world? Sorry to say they do. Turn to uh, 1 John chapter 2. Familiar verse. 1 John 2, 15 and 16. We're familiar, but we're going to go into a little more detail this morning. Why, how people give up the blessings of the world, of God, for the things of the world. 1 John 2.15 Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. I want to look at verse 16 there. We, we know about lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, familiar, but we don't go into, what do we mean by lust of the flesh? Lust, you can define lust like it's an excessive sinful desire. It's a lust. Now, lust of the flesh, what would that be? has to do with the flesh bodily. We normally think of lust as lust of, uh, for sex. That's a, that's a major one in this day and age. And along with that, 
goes uh, homosexuality, adultery, fornication. Then we get into who would have thought 20 years ago we'd be wrestling with transgender issues and all the garbage that's going on today. That's of the world. That's the flesh. Lust of the flesh. Our world is full of it. You can't get away from it. TV, movies, magazines, advertisements, it's all attractive, scantily clad woman in the picture or whatever. Now, lust of the eyes. That has to go with the, the eye gate. What we see, we see so-and-so has a beautiful car. You, you want that car. You've got to do whatever it takes to get that car, that house, that dress, that whatever we see. And that goes along with sex. If a man sees a beautiful, attractive woman, he'll lust after her with his eyes. That leads to lust of the flesh. And as you know, Jesus says, if you think about it, it's the same as having done it in your heart. So you can see how the world is so hard on Christians. Now, along these same lines, the, uh, the way we dress, Christians should dress differently. And this I'm talking mainly about the ladies now. La ladies don't have the problem with the eye gate and lust that men do. We all know that. But a lady, a Christian lady, shall not wear things that are too low, too high, too tight, or show too much skin. If we do, or if you do, or they do, you cause another, you may cause another person the lust after you. And if you do do that, that's your sin as well as his sin. Think about that. A lady should look dressed differently. The world should know by a lady's dress that she's not worldly. And the man has to have the final say. He should say to his wife, you know, you shouldn't wear that. That's too tight. That's, that's too whatever. And if the man thinks, well, I'm not sure if that's good or not. If you're in doubt, don't let her wear it. If in doubt, be conservative. Make sure your daughter, your wife dresses like a Christian would dress. Not, would not cause another to lust after her. You are, the husband is responsible. I know this causes many battles in the home with the wife. If you've got teenage girls, I know that's a struggle. It's a battle. The society tends to want and desire and show more skin, too tight, too low, too high. But the husband, the father, has to stand up and say, no, we're not going to dress like that. We're going to be conservative. We're going to dress like a Christian. That isn't done in very many homes. And I know it, it's a struggle. It's a battle. But a lot of Christians fall to the temptations of the world. And it's so easy because the world is so bad now that we can't get away from it, can't stay away from it. And we didn't touch on then the, the uh, pride of life. That's, that's an easy one. We all suffer from pride. I've taught on pride before. We all have pride, some more than others. Pride's like, and, and there's nothing wrong with some pride. You're, like, you're proud of your family. You're proud that you're good at your job or whatever. 
but you get excessive. Remember the definition of lust? Excessive pride. That's what he's, he's concerned about. So, uh, <clears throat> worldliness can also be called materialism. And that has, goes back to the lust of the eyes. The things we see, we lust after. Things, cars, boats, guns. What? The list is endless. Things that we see do we have an excessive, simple desire for. And uh, worldliness affects Christians in another way. Look at uh, Psalm 66, 18. Let, let me just quote it for you, if I can remember what it is. You won't have to look it up. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If you're guilty of any of these worldliness sins, flesh, eyes, and pride, then that's going to hinder your prayer life. If you have that in your heart, God can hear your prayers. And where would we be without answers to prayer? And I'm speaking again tonight, and I'm going to speak more again on prayer tonight. So, in, in my opinion, the vast majority of Christians today are missing out on many of the blessings of God because of worldliness and materialism. And if you, I don't see how you can argue against that. All of us struggle against it. Now, things like money, entertainment, uh, lust in all its forms, influence, all that, on and on and on. Now, old people. I am officially an old people. We have several of us fall in that category in the room. Now, there are advantages to being old, besides discounts, <laughs> parking places, things like that. We are not affected by the sins of the world as much as you younger people. I'm not, we're not immune by any means, but we're not affected as badly as often. It's not the struggle for us, it, it is for you younger people. Our kids are gone. Now we worry about and pray for our grandkids, that our kids are teaching their grandkids properly, Christian ethics and so on. But we are not bothered by worldliness like other people are. We've been up through it. We've gone through it. I don't have the desires I used to have, the lusts that I used to have. They're not all gone. I'm not immune. But it's still a battle for me, but not near the battle that it is for you younger people. Now, the, uh, what's the definition of an idol? Easy question. Joe? Something you put ahead of God. Anything that you place ahead of God is an idol. And what happened to the Jews in Bible times when they started worshiping idols, started worshiping God, what happened? you got to know your Old Testament. God lowered the moon. He withdrew his blessings. They were... They, lost battles. They were taken into captivity, on and on and on, sometimes for hundreds of years as a result of their worshiping idols. Well, this country, our country, is full of idols. And this worldliness thing that I've talked about, all those things, if they come before God, if money come before God, if you work to make more money instead of going to church, Money is your idol. 
and you can substitute any of the things that we talked about can be an idol. And if you if you battled any of these things, be careful. If they become excessive, they become an idol. You lose God's blessings. You lose God's ear. Think about that. As I said, the U.S. is filled. Let's go to Romans 7. Now, I encourage you to go to the verses, look them up yourself. I know it's a pain. Pastor is good to us. He'll usually read it for us. I'm not that nice. I want you to look at it yourself. You learn more as you're seeing it and as I'm reading it. So I want you to get everything out of these verses that you can get. Excuse me a second. But they're only going to have to look at 30 or 40 verses today. No, not really. 10 or 12, maybe. You'll get a blessing from it, I guarantee you. Romans 11. I am yakking and not going to it. The 11, 7, and 8. Eleven seven. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. I think personally God has blinded this country, the United States of America, because we have turned our back on God. Our country is full of idols. Sodom and Gomorrah can't have been as bad as this country. It, it's, it's pitiful. And I, I, I think he has blinded. He's removed his blessings. How, how else could somebody like Obama and Biden get elected if God hasn't blinded the eyes of this people, the people in this country. We're getting what we deserve because we've allowed all these things to happen and we are given in to all these things and things of the world time after time after time. And now we're paying the price. God, we've lost God's blessing on our nation and a lot of Christian families have lost God's blessing on their families and, and those individuals. Now, so what does the Bible say about how to be blessed? It has a lot to say. A lot. <clears throat> You'll notice that many of the promised blessings that we're going to look at are conditions, conditional promises. And I've taught on this before. What is a conditional promise? Don't be bashful. Shame. I know you know. Conditional promise is a promise God makes on a condition we do certain things. God says, if you do this, I will do this. And many of these blessings are conditional, as you're going to see. If we do this, follow his instructions, then he will fulfill the promise. Now, I want you to think about something else. If God loved you and I enough, to send his son to die for us, to suffer and die. 
And he also must love us enough to want to give us all kinds of blessings. If he loved us enough to sacrifice his son so we can uh, eternal, eternal life, he wants to bless us. He wants to. And uh, while we're here in Romans, look at uh, Romans 8. Eight thirty one. Thirty two. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that has spared not his own son, but delivered him us up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? God wants to give us all kinds of things. He's promised to in many of these conditional promises. Now, God can't help but be frustrated with you and I because he promised to give us blessings, these conditional promises, but he can't give us the blessings because we refuse to follow the instructions to obtain the blessing. You follow what I'm saying? He tells us what to do, and we don't do it. We won't do it. We'd rather follow the things of the world than follow the things of God and thereby lose the blessing. That doesn't make any sense to me. Now, He cannot bless sin. Look, look at First John. First John three. Twenty two. First John three twenty twenty two. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. Now, condition. What's the condition? It's right there. What is it? Keeping his commandments. Commandments are God's word. Obeying, trying to obey and do what God tells us to do gets us blessings. He promised it. God can't break a promise. You and I break promises right and left. God cannot. If we do our part, he's honor bound to grant that blessing, the conditional blessing that he's promised. How to be blessed? Matthew 6. Thirty to thirty three. Matthew six thirty. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow was cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What's the promise there in 33? If we seek first the kingdom of God, put God first, not the things of the world. Put God first. Then he'll bless us, but he knows just what we need. He wants to promise, he wants to bless us, and he will. Now, Matthew 7 7, right across the page. <clears throat> 
7, 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Got to ask, seek, knock. But there's more involved. We're going to talk about that a little later. But again, that's another condition. And then in Matthew 21, Twenty-one, twenty-two. If you're not looking these up, at least write them down. All these things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. But what the condition there? When you ask for something, believe that God is willing and able to do it. We're going to talk about more about this a little later, too. Now, we're going to look at several Old Testament promises. But just because they're in the Old Testament doesn't mean they don't apply to you and I. They do. They're the Word of God. Uh, Deuteronomy 4. Certainly, by the time I get there, you'll all be there. Four forty. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee and with thy children, notice and with thy children, after thee that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, long life, which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. With thy children, <clears throat> if we're living, <clears throat> excuse me, according to the Bible, according to his word, our children are going to see that, and they'll go a long way to see that our children live accordingly. We've got to live a good Christian life before our young people. Okay, the uh, Deuteronomy 11. I made it easy, try to keep them similar books so it don't have to flip so far. 11, 26 to 28. Behold, I set before you this, this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing, if, notice the if, I have if circled, if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse, if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way, which I command you this day, to go after other gods, idols, which ye have not known. A promised blessing and a promised curse if we go after these idols. And this country is now under the curse, in my view. In Deuteronomy 28, twenty-eight. Eight and nine. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he hath sworn unto thee. If, I say if, Thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. This was written to the Jews 
his promised people. But now we are his promised people. We are God's children today. So it's written to us as God's children. Idols, again, he talks over and over in Old Testament about idols. We don't call them idols in this country today, but they are. We need to call them for what they are. Anything we put before God is an idol. Joshua, you knew I was going to go at this verse. We all know this one. Joshua 1, 7 and 8. <clears throat> Joshua says, Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to, to do according all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not thou, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Prosper in everything we do if we don't turn away from him. Verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest deserve to do, do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. And I have if circled in the margin that I have inserted, if we do what he tells us to do, we shall prosper and have good success in everything we attempt to do. Whether it be a job, starting a business, whatever we do, we prosper. Um, first Kings. First Kings 2. Verse 3. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and, to, and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. Again, are you seeing a, a trend here? What's the trend that he's telling us, showing us here to be blessed? Keep his commandments. Keep his simple enough, but we don't do it. 1 Kings 9. Six to nine. See if this doesn't describe the United States of America. Verse six. But if he shall at all turn from following me, ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I cut off Israel or the United States out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hallowed for my name will I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And at this house, which is nigh, everyone that passeth by it, talking about the United States now, everyone that looks at the United States or by it shall be astonished and shall hiss, and they shall say, Why hath God done this unto this land and to this house? And they shall answer, because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt, 
and have taken hold upon other gods and have worshipped them and have served them, therefore hath the Lord brought them all this evil. Why does this, does this country have all the issues and problems we have? Right there it is. This country's turned their back on God. God has turned his back on us. He has blinded our eyes. Psalm 1. Psalm 1, 1 to 3. <clears throat> Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Scornful you call mockers or someone to hold someone in contempt, despise another person. Verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Do we take light, delight in God's word? I do. I hope you do. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law that he meditate day and night. I don't do it night, day and night. I do mine at night. Do it day Day and night would be better, wouldn't it? Three, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatsoever, whatever you do as a Christian will prosper if you do what God says to do. If you delight in his word, and if you delight in his word, you will be in his word. Uh, <clears throat> I can't help but say something about this. Being a tree man, a tree planted by the rivers of water. Water is the most important ingredient when you plant a tree. It can have poor soil and still survive. But if a, a tree planted in poor or great soil without water is about to die every time. Water is more important than anything else. And that's what he's saying about water is, hard water is the delight in the word of God. I couldn't pass that up. Now, Haggai, Haggai, why? It's the third from the last. Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Right at the end of the Old Testament. It's a tough one because it's so short. Haggai 1, 5 and 6. Now therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And ye that earn earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. That is describing the Christian that is not honoring God, not obeying God, not delighting and in his word. The Christian, and it also speaks to tithing, a Christian that doesn't tithe God has a way of taking that money 
the bag of holes. You put your money in the bank, and somehow it just disappears. You put it in a bag with holes, and it disappears because God is not blessing you. Talks about, refers to tithing, but it's referring to the Christian that is not obeying God, not delighting in God or his word. He's not going to get ahead. He's not going to prosper. No matter what he does, he's going to go through the bag of holes. <clears throat> now, back to 1 John, chapter 5 this time. Some of you knew this was coming, I'm sure. <clears throat> 1 John 5, 14. 1 John 5, 14. And this is the confidence, <clears throat> excuse me, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that's God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. I have his underlined there. Notice that phrase, and I think we read right over it. <clears throat> we don't get the significance. What we ask for when we pray has got to be according to his will. You see that? And this is the confidence, in other words, confidence that God's going to hear him, that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. So we ask for what we ask for must be according to his will. If it is, we can be confident he hears, he will answer. Now, verses that we talked, looked at before, Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and it shall be given thee. That, you got to allow, consider that verse with this verse. We've got to be according to his will. And the same thing with, um, uh, when was it? Matthew 21, 22. And all things whatsoever ye ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. But you have to consider John, 1 John 5, 14 with that verse as well. Because not everything we ask for is according to his will. Most of our prayers are, God, I need this, I need that, I need this, I need that. And our needs are not really our needs usually. We confuse needs with wants. In essence, we're saying, God, I want this, I want this, this, this. A want and a need are two different things. God promises to meet our needs. He, he knows what we need. If we're doing what he said, he'll meet those needs. But when we pray, we've got to pray according to his will. Now, how are you going to know his will? You've got to be in the word of God to search out his will. And while you're in the book, searching for his will, ask the Holy Spirit, the teacher, to show you his will. If there's any something particular thing you're searching for, ask the Holy Spirit to help you find the particular verse or principle in the Word of God so you'll know you're praying in his will. We forget that, and we <clears throat> we can't just pray for anything. God knows a lot of things we want are not good for us. 
he knows that if I won the lottery, that would not be good for me. First, you've got to play the lottery to win it. And I never have, never will. But we've got to <clears throat> remember, we've got to look for his will. Look for his will when we pray. The, uh, again, I'm winding down. Is it time? We're getting close. As I said, <clears throat> most of these verses that we talk about blessings have to do with prosperous in whatever form it takes. Making, meeting our wants, and he'll meet a lot of our wants too and needs. He'll know what's good for us, what's not good for us. We think we know what's good for us, but we don't. We think that our, our needs and our wants are both good for us, but he knows what, which ones are, which are, are not. So <clears throat> I want to close with this. Count on it. When you pray that you cannot break a conditional promise and receive God's blessings. You can't. God promises that if we do what he says to do, he promises to grant that request, that prayer that want, that need. He'll know what's good for us. He'll know what we want, what we need, and he'll answer accordingly. If we are in the book, if we're delighting in the book, if we are striving to obey, none of us are perfect. We all fail daily. But if he knows sees our hearts that we're trying, he will bless. All of us could be a lot further along, could be much more prosperous today if we were more faithful to God and his word. And that's a promise from God, and he cannot break a promise. So let's close in prayer. Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you that you love us. You, 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 we are your children. You love us more than we can possibly imagine. Enough that you sent your son to die for us. You want to bless us. If only we will do what you say. If we will heed your instructions and be in your word, obey your word. So help us, Lord to be faithful, to be obedient, to delight in your word. And we'll count on you for your many blessings. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.